Hey, listen seriously. Well, you know my friend Sally? Well, that's what she says about me. She says that I'm, um, fun deficient. Oh, I don't believe that. That's what she says. <laughs> one on one? Who? Me and her? Yeah, come on. Look at this. Perfect. No one can tell me because you're acquainted. Tonight we watched Catwoman, one of the one of the most universally recognized movies in a contender spot for uh, worst movie ever made. So kind of what was the plot of Catwoman? Well the plot of Catwoman is a lady named like Precious or Why the fuck did you do that? That some lady named Precious, some fucking fat bitch named Precious. Halle Berry is a fucking dirty bitch named Precious or Pristina. I fucking have that Wikipedia article pulled out of those bitch. Patience. Patience. Uh, Patience works at a beauty company that's developing a super beauty queen cream that's reversing everyone's aging. And basically she was making an art project for like a magazine ad or some shit, some advertisement or some campaign and then they're like, all right, turn this in at midnight. And I guess like the delivery company was closed. So for some reason she broke into this lab area uh, because I guess they wanted to turn her, she needed to turn it into the lab and she went in and just walked right through the security and nobody stopped her and she ended up in a room where just, it just so happened the CEO and some fucking dude were talking about how yeah, this beauty cream basically turns your face into, basically gives you like leper's disease and you fucking become ugly. And then they said, hey, we see a lady over there. And then they chased her and these two security guards flushed her out of the sewer. And uh, meanwhile, she meets like this fucking cop guy. He's, I guess, like some like Latina hunk, Latino hunk. And they're all like, you're super cool. And, and his, her stereotypical gay and fat uh, friends are oh, like, girlfriend, you gotta get it. You gotta get it. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait. You don't get wait. it. I'm gonna get fucked. Yeah, yeah, that was backing up a little bit. But going back forward, basically, she fucking gets killed in the sewer pipe, and a bunch of CGI cats bring her back to life. And then basically, like, she starts like stealing stuff and she's a like, Sam Raimi Spider-Man experimenting with the fucking her superpowers and she's like, wow, I'm a fucking Catwoman now. And then she decides she's gonna stop this evil plot which she thinks is run by the lady's husband, but it turns out like the whole plot is like led by her husband or like the way the lady fucking lesbian looking lady. So Halle Berry and her uh, so Halle Berry plays basketball, and then Halle Berry fights to, gets framed for the murders, goes to jail, and then she fights uh, the fucking company owner to the death, and uh, basically the company lady dies, and her cop boyfriend's like, I'll get you out of jail, precious, and precious, but thanks a lot. And then she gets out of jail, and then he goes to the cafe to meet her, and she's like, Sorry to cuck you, Johnny, or whatever his name was, but then she's like, I'm an independent spirit. She's like whipping her fucking whip everywhere, and it's like fucking full gimp suit, and running around the city as Catwoman, and that was the entire fucking movie. So, Aiden, what did you think of the half hour Catwoman you saw before you passed out and subjected to seeing <laughs> this movie alone for the fourth fucking time? Okay, I watched like or less. <laughs> or less. <laughs> well, whatever. This movie is... Well, clearly I didn't miss anything because I pretty much just guessed the ending. This movie is all... This movie is two types of scenes. It's either very obvious foreshadowing, like, basically they'll be like, You're like a cat, precious. And she's like, I'm Catwoman now. Like, the entire movie is just full of, like, fucking blatant fucking... Six year old could see it coming, foreshadowing. They're like, I gave you this leather sex suit. And she's like, oh, I'll never wear that suit. Wink. And uh, yeah, okay. this movie is, uh, the other half of the movie is just filled with random fucking shit. Like random horrible shit. Like the basketball scene. It looks like the a scene is got It looks like an NSYNC music video or something where it's just like, 
full of Dutch angles and they're like flipping all over the place and there's all these quick Well, you also gotta remember that she's like checking up her ass. Yeah, she's dribbling the ball and like shaking her ass in his face and there's like very sexualized. There's like these eight-year-olds, like a whole crowd of eight-year-olds watching them like fuck on the basketball court. Basically, and they're all impressed by it. They're like, wow, this is Halle Berry dry humping a guy. Basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they're at like the ballet and she's running around in the back and stuff. This movie's fucking boring as shit. It's overstuffed with terrible fucking horrible CGI of Halle Berry, cartoon Halle Berry jumping around. It's not even just the CGI that's terrible. Well, that is just the, well, the all the action too. The cat CGI is fucking horrible. Like, there's lines that seem like they're supposed to be one-liners, but they're not jokes, where Halle Berry's just like, meow, and it'll like cut up to super close-up, and like the musical pause, like it's the most dramatic thing ever, she's like, purr. And the movie, it's really, really just bizarre, and very, 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 very deser deserving of all the hate it gets, because it is just god-fucking-awful, and it's not even... It's hard to talk about because it's like, there's not just, <laughs> there's not just one thing wrong, there's not just ten things wrong. The entire movie is like a boring sloppy mess that's shot like a fucking amateur music video. Uh, nobody, nothing, nothing in this movie makes any fucking, this movie makes too much sense. There's nothing going on in this movie, it's like a goddamn fucking pilot episode for a crappy TV show, except even fucking crappy TV shows in 2004 had better fucking pilots and this and better CGI. Stolen thoughts, stolen hands. So what'd you think, bud? I don't even know where to start with this. Might as well just go ahead. I'll start again once you're done. Um, I don't know where to start with this. Uh, I do not, I don't know where to start with this fucking movie, it's a fucking mess. Basically, uh, I mean, as an adaption of Catwoman, let's start out with how it adapts Catwoman or anything related to Catwoman. It's based on characters by Bob Kane, uh, and that'll Bill Finger too, obviously, is in that category acknowledged, uh, but uh, uh, it has nothing to do with those characters whatsoever. Um, First off, Catwoman's a thief for like one scene, so that if anyone sees this, it's like, oh, it's just like Catwoman. But in reality, she's like a fucking just straight good guy who is trying to stop this. Well, first off, I don't even know why she was fucking murdered in the first place, because like, apparently the FDA didn't find out about this plan, about how this fucking shit's like basically crack. Like, is this, is there like beauty products supposed to like represent drugs or something, it's, that's yeah, fucking yes. just a cringy concept in the first place. Everyone gets hooked to it, they get headaches, and then their like, skin starts rashing up. Obviously, they're talking about, like, meth, basically. Pretty much. And then, uh, I mean, if you just, you can basically just go down the list of cringy shit. Like, the fact that this movie is fucking so horribly dated. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, if I could go back for a second to how it adapts, uh, Catwoman. Uh, it has nothing to do with Batman, uh, there's no other characters related to the Batman universe except Catwoman, and like I was previously saying, um, very little is taken or borrowed from the source material. Uh, Catwoman doesn't even share the same name with the original Catwoman, there's not a character that, like, is a nod to the original Catwoman, there's not the slightest reference, there's not the slightest reference to Batman, or, or Bruce Wayne, or... Selena Kyle or anything about Catwoman, uh, which leads me to believe that this was definitely a different script completely. Someone probably pitched the basic idea and they're just like, eh, make it into a Catwoman movie and we'll give it to Halle Berry. And then that's what happened. And it's basically like a weird, like, superhero movie that shot like a music video, but like, it's like a hybrid of like a early 2000s music video, but also, like, obviously just, like, didn't know how to make a superhero movie, so they just kind of copy-pasted Sam Raimi's Spider-Man in the worst possible way, 
and, uh, you know, Catwoman, every fucking moment of Halle Berry being on screen was cringy. Um, mostly because just the sheer amount of cringy scenes. Like, like I said, everything was pretty much shot like a music video, so it's like Catwoman's like bending over and hanging her ass out, and, like fucking giving fucking George Lopez a lap dance and shit. And honestly, it was just some of the cringiest shot composition ever. You know, her motivations made no sense. None of the motivations made any sense, because the husband was just a douche who wanted to cheat on his wife, which is bad, is basically why he was evil. So he deserved to get killed and nobody was supposed to care. And the wife wanted to make this skin cream to make people ugly or it so to the crack drugs so she was and rich. Money. And so that she was hot because she was like bitter about it. And, and that basically sex meant sex that like when she got fucking executed, we weren't supposed to feel bad for her. And this led to her uh, committing multiple homicides, or indirectly, or directly, and, uh, you know, so the villain plot was not there whatsoever. Like, the villain plot was not well thought out. The story was not well thought out. Within five minutes, you know, the entire plot. Oh, Because, yeah. like, literally the first opening shot, I believe, is Catwoman's like, I, I died, and then I came back to life, and here's my story, and it's like, Okay, she's a nerd, she becomes Catwoman, she becomes more confident, she gets a boyfriend, she now knows that she, at the end she becomes independent. It's like all this crap that you knew that she, her story arc was revealed within 30 seconds of the movie starting. And then right after that, the first second we actually have, within the storytelling, like the linear part of the storytelling, not like the, the uh, flash forward, which is a pointless flash forward, because we get to that point in the movie within 20 minutes, so that was completely pointless, but... The fucking first thing we see is her friends putting a face cream on, and she's like, wow, this really makes me feel young. I'm so addicted to it, you know? I'm addicted. A headache. And then and the, I feel the, like the, mean, the mean lady comes in, and she's like, I'm so evil. And then, <laughs> like, then, and basically it's like, okay, so now you know she's the villain. And then her friend, fucking minivan, fucking gets put in the hospital. And she's like, I have such bad headaches that my skin is starting to look like a leper. You know, it's like, come on. And then the whole movie is just awkward. Like, this guy's a hunk, that guy's a hunk. And it's like, Halle Berry's let's, ass shots like every four yeah, seconds. Yeah, let's look at the demographics. It's like, this movie was definitely made for, I feel like, African-American women, sort of. And yeah, women in definitely. general, but definitely especially. African American women, and I don't mean that in an offensive way, but the movie was shot clearly for women. Like, if you're oh a fan God. of the comic books or like, a, or just movies, action movies or superhero movies uh, in general, you're not going to get anything out of this, even if you have no idea anything about Catwoman, because everything about it's so fucking stupid. Uh, most of the CGI is dated. Well, no, all the CGI is dated like shit. But I was going to say the action doesn't work either compared to the more, you know, modern yeah. superhero films, like... No, everything is just, very like, quick terrible. jump cuts all over. It looks like shit. It looks fucking horrible, and honestly, like, you can't even, like, have compelling fight scenes when you have no compelling villains, either. Yeah, this movie is, like, a fucking... It's, like, a really bizarre remake of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, yeah, except it's, like, really. super sexist. They just took like, aspects. They, they, they ape off them. a bunch of shit from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, like, stylistically, but it's I mean, not put together time, well. I mean, you gotta keep in mind, this is 2004, so obviously and then what it's they're like, gonna do is... They, like, go down the list, they're like, what are things that women like? Uh, evil makeup, they got the makeup in there, she goes to the ballet, but fucking let's, dating hunky yeah. Mexican men, what Wearing and clothes. talking about like, ooh, that's a nice butt and shit like that. It's very stereotypical gay man. They were yeah, just like, I mean, every character in this was a fucking character. Catwoman before she becomes Catwoman is like the nerdy girl, and afterward she's all adventurous. And and the woman like like you think like the villain could almost have, and I'm stretching it, but you could almost if you were the perfect writer somehow turn the villain somewhat compelling maybe. Like, she's like, you know what, my husband's cheating on me because I feel too old. I'm no longer the head model of my own company because I'm too old, you know. She feels like her business has started and she's ending it, so she makes this addictive formula. And obviously, they could have done a better job of making it more subtle, subtle about how it's supposed to be basically crack. And 
she's selling this out to the masses. She's like, fuck it. She kind of blames her husband. The husband looks like a douche, but at the end, maybe somehow you feel slightly sympathetic for him, like in the way, like, you know, he was evil, but it was more like he was just a douchebag type, rather than actually being like a blatant, like, super villain who we don't feel bad for. Because then at the end, you know, the wife felt very two dimensional, like the whole thing, she just was doing it to be evil. But obviously, if you had a halfway competent writer, you could write it more like it's her self esteem problems, you know, you could almost make her more sympathetic. Uh, so when you died, you, she died, you gave half of a fuck. Um, obviously, Minivan was pretty much like the stereotypical, like, you know, she's like a comic relief, Jar Jar Binks comes yeah. to mind. She was uh, like Mike and Molly, where she's like a fat ass, but she's like, oh, all I want to do is have I sex. Wanna have a bunch I want to sex. She was basically Amy Schumer of 2004. I was yeah. impressed. I want this hunky Mexican man to pin me down and oh, ass fuck me. It was Arr. Amy Schumer humor, except like, oh. probably slightly worse delivery than Amy Schumer. And I say slightly, but. Definitely was there. And the stereotypical gay man, I don't know if the dude was actually gay or if he just swallowed his pride and did it, but he's like, yeah, that's your ass. And it's like, I no, know, I just... know fucking gay people, and I have not met a single, and I know some flamboyant gay people, and I have never met a flamboyantly gay person as gay as that guy. Like, I have no problem with you if you're gay, but that is not a good representation of the gay community. Like, come on. If, if that was what I wanted to be represented yes, as. Yes, rip that hunk, rip that hunk ass up, baby. <laughs> you should have told the tap. that box, <laughs> queen. Waters in the tap. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what Ali Berry did to the Mexican guy. But Waters in the tap. <laughs> it was essentially fucking horrible. Um, <laughs> let me think. There's definitely oh, more I have to talk it. about. I mean, night. Oh. Probably this movie was about 90 minutes or so. I don't know exactly how, what the runtime was. It was like an hour 43, but that's not counting credits, if I remember correctly. What, um, what was with the But movie? a good hour of it had nothing to do with the actual story. No. A lot of it was, was a love story, which was like 30 minutes that was very boring for me as a straight male. And uh, as a comic fan, I definitely, you know, Does this had no interest in this made-up character, Hernandez or whatever. And, made up Catwoman, and, um, basically, uh, um, fuck, I mean, uh, the you got basketball scene, you got dance club scene, there's a lot of fucking scenes that were just completely pointless and could be cut out, but, I don't even get why the supernatural element is in this movie, where, no, like, there's this cat ghost that possessed women through history, and well, all these women have, like, a cat ghost living in them. I get it, like, like I would understand that if they fleshed it out, but literally the opening title sequence shows all this crap and then she like Googles like Egyptians connected to cats and it's like where do you draw this connection? Where do you put a point A to point C there, you know? Where's point B? She just magically fucking knows what to Google. She also instantly knows she's a cat, she's fucking scarfing down on tuna and sleeping you know, on the floor. She's like, like I have dual personalities now and it's like it's like, shit in the when, box or how the are phone? these dual personalities brought about? Is it only at night? Is it, like, there's no rule to the personality. It's like when the screenwriter says she's Catwoman, she's around the house eating fucking tuna. Shit the next minute she's with her friends and she's like, oh, I'm so shy. And like, like, obviously there was like, supposed to be like a feminist message to it where it's like, women are more, they're just as strong as men or whatever, and her shit can just be as good as everything else, but it came off as really tacky, because every way they did it, it was like, okay, she beats up at basketball, that might be a good scene if she's just like serving his ass at basketball, but he's, she's just like giving him lap dances on the court, none of it's like actual legal basketball at all, and she's... He like starts to tear off his shirt, he's like taking yeah, off his shirt no, and showing his abs and all the these little kids, that's the funny shot, they're all doing it. And he literally just for no reason pulls up his shirt, shows his abs off, and then puts his thing down. I'm like, this is fuck. The basketball crazy. scene literally ends with her slam dunking the ball, yep. and in the process, she somehow just ends up straddling this dude's cock, and she's like grinding on his cock, and the kid's like, hey, can I have my ball back, man? And there's like these fucking six year olds just staring around watching Halle Berry and fucking also, George Lopez rape each other. In the I also love court. how fucking Luigi from the Super Mario Brothers movie was fucking uh, <laughs> I also love how Luigi from the Super Mario Brothers movie, my favorite line is when he's like, yeah, man, 
I just take my job so seriously. This is the guy who, like, one scene ago, instead of, like, actually doing police business, you know, like, filling out forms or arresting people or trying to stop traffic. I don't really fucking know what this job, this guy's job is. One minute he's a homicide detective, the next minute he's fucking working the streets. This fucking dude has no fucking real job. And he's the only detective in all of... Catwoman City, or whatever <laughs> this is. Like, I don't think it's like Gotham. Open. CGI, horrible looking PS2 CGI fucking yeah, city. It's fucking um, he's the only fucking cop there, and basically, uh, he's like, Yeah, I mean, I take my job so seriously. That's why I take 50 coffee breaks a day. I'm always flashing my abs at children, I'm trying to pick them up, <laughs> playing basketball. Like, hey, little kids. Hey, my name's Hernandez. <laughs> He's stalking, he like stalks Halle Berry and like shows up at her work and like sexually harasses her and stuff. Like he yeah. has all this free time to do all this shit before he, she drops her wallet on her way to work and right as she, like five seconds after she arrives at work, he walks in and he's like, I ran by my office and I was like googling like Dutch painting and stuff. And I can tell that's and the inspiration for your art style. It's like... Do you fucking retards know how Google works? What was you like? Oh, Halle Berry medical painting. What is it? <laughs> it's like Dutch painting. So this dude obviously was researching painting for hours. They're like, they're like, hey Dutch, have you made the fucking any process in the triple child molesting crime? And he's like, no, I've actually been working on researching Dutch art right now, so I can stalk this lady. And they're like back to work and he's like you know I take the job more seriously than you Hernandez I don't have a partner I can't take my job so seriously well, like, he doesn't have a partner because he probably doesn't work for the police force yeah. he's probably just like fucking he doesn't sniffing have, bitches pain he doesn't have shit. a partner because his last partner probably got all his shot partner. he's like I need backup and he's like I'm Researching Dutch paintings. All his partners <laughs> kept reporting him for sexual harassment. They'd be like, "Yeah, he was actually raping a homeless girl They'd in the street." Like, we went and back. so they would take an accidental bullet in the back of the head, friendly fire. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally shot him. I don't know what happened. He you just like, like jumped in the way of my bullet. This meth head fucking came out of nowhere. He was <laughs> just back into the streets before he could catch him. Like, Hernandez, this is your fourth <laughs> partner this week, and each one has filed a sexual harassment suit against you for sniffing women's panties and <laughs> flipping through their wallets and researching Dutch paintings and Dutch waffles and whatever else. Dutch ovens. Dutch ovens, yeah. But, um, oh God. You think that, you think the Mexican guy was the screenwriter? I feel like he was. I, I have no idea who the screenwriter was. I don't think so. Maybe, actually, because he wasn't that attractive and everybody was talking about it like, like, like he literally was a step above George Lopez he was like a solid three and a half no I mean he definitely like they, they didn't talk him up some a lot weird male model or something. they did talk him up a lot and obviously like he didn't have the acting chops where they're like okay you know he might not be the most handsome guy and we're you know we're chopping him off to be like fucking just the most handsome dude in the yeah, world yeah no, he some thinking, random nobody he was some random and nobody was that could, they couldn't even get like a cheap no mile. Yeah, I mean, honestly, look, I could have probably done his acting role better than him because he was a fucking horrible actor like everyone else in this movie. Like, Halle Berry, you know, she's had some bad roles before. She's taken roles where it's like, why in the actual fuck did you take this role? Why are you doing it? Like, this movie might have been killed by editing, but Halle Berry's performance was nothing to write home about. In fact, nobody's performance was anything to write home about. Um, but yeah, I mean, bottom line is, you know, if we look at this from the perspective of who was this movie made for, uh, comic fans, uh, it's the least faithful thing ever. It's pretty much about getting dick and being a feminist and 90% of the fucking 90% of comic readers are not going to be interested in that you know does it have an empowering feminist message sometimes Catwoman like beats out the guy in basketball and then the next minute she's like she's like I need to solve the most important case in New York who's making women ugly <laughs> you know like, oh, yeah. like it's not empowering at all it's actually no. kind of offensive is many ways. Like, I am not a feminist, but this dude, movie is straight offensive. Like, let's look at DC. the best thing. Other try at a female superhero. 
Supergirl. That whole movie was about getting a boyfriend. That didn't work in the 70s. So now in the early 2000s, let's make another movie about a female superhero. And this time it's like, huh, what should we do? Uh, perfume plant. Yeah. And so I don't Even think for women makeup. or men would, should like this. Should like this. If Maybe this movie could have aired on Lifetime and been pretty good, but this was definitely theatrically released and definitely had quite the budget. And a fucking PS2 game. You know, if this supposed to be even worse in the movie. If this motherfucking thing came out on Lifetime, I would be like hard pass. But <laughs> you know, as far as Lifetime goes, you know, it's almost passable. You know, it's almost passable for a Lifetime movie, but. I look at this and I say, it, it's so different, it's going to alienate comic fans. It's so fucking sexist, it should alienate any <laughs> self-respecting <laughs> woman. Maybe if you're like six years old, but then it's like this hyper-sexualized movie. Even where Catwoman's in like BDSM stripper. Even if it like wasn't Ben Hernandez while he's fucking naked, he's like, ugh, even this if is half, so sexy, I can't believe sniffing panties finally <laughs> paid off, you know? Even if this movie wasn't <laughs> hyper-sexualized and weird fetish shit. Oh yeah, this, this movie, movie is that boring as shit. Boring. Could you imagine taking a kid to this fucking thing? It's oh, so God, fucking no. boring. Literally nothing happens. No. Literally not a single thing happens. She falls in the poopy. She... Yeah. Gets revived by the horse. Almost like gets that. shot by some people, and then like she beats people up off camera, or she beats them yeah. up on camera. But there's so many jump cuts, you can't even tell. Yeah, I mean. And then she walks around. And talking almost to every thing you can see until the last is this, like, wide seconds. roundhouse kick. I'm gonna try and do it with my fingers, but she like goes wide, and like her leg goes up, yeah. and she kicks him in the face. Every and fucking jump cuts. fight seen like ten. Times. It was virtually every attack. She didn't really <laughs> punch people. She kind of like clawed people once in a while. The choreography was fucking garbage, um, but yeah, I really just, I can't see who this movie was for. Plus half this movie is and just shots at Ellie Berry's ass. Like I want to point to out the most that up. is just crazy to me, is that this was in production at the same time as Batman Begins. Like, Batman Begins is like the most serious adaption of like Batman, and I'm not saying this in like the most accurate or anything. But I'm saying it's like a serious movie, and they're like, we have to take this super seriously. It's like real life, you know. But they at least had the core characters. I legitimately think this movie started as something else. Slowly, maybe somehow they were thinking like, you know, how can we make more money for this? Maybe Warner Brothers saw it and said, you know what? We could make this a Catwoman movie. Warner Brothers so then they probably reworked it. Cheap porno. <laughs> I'm sure it was a cheap superhero movie. Probably like, uh, who knows, like, you know, Kitty Girl or something like that. Kitty Girl lore or something. I mean, like, let's not even change this. The Cat let's just call her Catwoman. And where the fuck did she get the name Catwoman? I said Catwoman, now all I can think about is the whole time everybody calls her Catwoman. Hey Catwoman, Catwoman out of the evil well, lady. Well, she in the, the crazy cat Catwoman. lady said that, oh no no. It's the crazy from, cat lady was calling her Catwoman too. Everyone was calling her Catwoman. The crazy cat lady called her Catwoman, but it, after, that, after the, 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 the burglary the scene, the, the like robbers were like, she was dressed she was like a, a cat. cat and then, no, and then the officers when they're walking out, they're like, Maybe we should call her, like, Cat Girl or something. And then, like, the next scene, everyone just called her Catwoman. Yeah, Which maybe. is the name that that lady made up for her. Or the lady I made up for herself. Or like, Catwoman. Yeah. Something like, like Catwoman is the actual name of the spirit possessor. Any which person. way, it's contrived. And she just fucking ran with it. And bottom line is, like, they couldn't, like, I don't know if DC didn't allow them, or Warner Brothers, I should say, because DC wasn't calling shots, obviously. Warner Brothers just signed the paper that said, okay, Catwoman, but I legitimately, there wasn't a reference, like, in these movies, a lot of the times, even the ones that are kind of, like, unrelated, you'll see, like, references to other things, like, you got references, even if it's not direct or, like, inaccurate, you got references, there might be some graffiti that says, like, fucking Harley Quinn in the background or some shit. Just something to nod to fans. And in something like this, which is so inaccurate to the source material, if we could see, like, a building that said, like, that had, like, a W on it, so we're like, Wayne or Bruce Wayne, maybe we'd feel a little more into the world, but this was very clearly not supposed to be a Catwoman movie. And I... 
don't even know if it was supposed to be like a superhero movie. It was supposed to be like an empowering feminist message, but honestly it just came off as so offensive and stupid that I can't imagine any woman wouldn't be slightly offended by the fucking content pre presented. Like, this movie's bafflingly fucking bad on every fucking level. I don't know who, who, how does this get into the theaters? Who watched this movie and said, here's our target audience? What focus group did they bring in that said good? Because obviously they didn't bring any comic fans in, which you probably should be doing if you're doing the, you know, a comic book movie. Did they bring 50-year-old women in there? They should have fired their did, editor. Did they bring 50-year-old women in there? That's the only thing I can imagine. 50-year-old like, black oh, women? Oh, that was a good picture. Or like, like, yeah, 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 and that was a good picture, Shanae. Like 35-year-old. Oh, Lord. That was like one of them talking the pictures thing, just like when I was a girl. The only thing that kept this slightly over water from completely drowning, like, if they didn't have the Halle Berry name in, none of the other actors or actresses were known. All of them knew that shit. Halle Berry knew this was a shitty movie. I'm sure the thing got edited, she watched the movie, and she was like, holy shit, I'm not going to admit do another movie that I have to sign a contract until I have, like, the fucking finalized I mean, script. She was so fucking... She knew that this movie was so oh. bad that she's, like, one of the only people who ever went to collect her golden raspberries in person. She collected, like, eight golden raspberries I, in person. I totally... Proudly. I'm totally guessing they're like, hey, they're approaching you to run a deleted uh, Catwoman movie, and maybe they had a script that was, like, you know, I'm not saying Halle Berry's gonna be like, I need comic accuracy, but she probably said, oh, look, it's Catwoman, you know. They probably gave her a basic concept, and she signed on, kind of halfway trust in what was going on, you know. Keep in mind, this is like the start of, like, the revival of, like, superhero mania. At least it's the ultimate superhero mania for movies. I mean, we had, like, the Sam yeah. Raimi Spider-Man movies, X-Men, Blade, we were moving in, this is like the transition period, like 2004 to like 2008 was like the big transition period before Iron Man and Dark Knight, which basically blew the genre up to literally be the biggest genre in film currently, so this is definitely, she was kind of like, probably saw the success, you know, as a Hollywood actor, you probably see the shit going on, you're like, well, franchise potential, gotta expect, like, you know, the movies, the other ones were somewhat decent, she probably had, she had slight success with Storm, but she wasn't really in the limelight on that one so much, she was underutilized there, so she probably thought she could lead a franchise, make a dick load of money, and it'd work out fine, signed a contract, filmed the movie, and then probably said, fuck, what the fuck did I just get myself into? Because I really don't think that well, she's she wearing the bondage gear. She was probably like, I'm already signed in to do this and I'm stuck in it. <sighs> if, if this was meant to be a Catwoman movie from day one, like when the first letter was printed on the page, when whoever made the concept said, this is the film I want to make, if they said this was a Catwoman movie, they dropped the ball. Like, I'm not saying you have to make an exact adaption. Like, None of the Batman movies, I mean, you know, we kind of got a slightly more accurate, sort of, uh, in the way of following comics in recent years, even though, you know, the DC movies are garbage, but, you know, the 80s Batmans, late 80s, early 90s Batmans, you know, at least they understood the concept. Sam Raimi Spider-Man weren't exactly what Spider-Man was, but it, you know, it wasn't an exact adaption, but it got the core idea. You know, if you don't understand the core idea of what you're adapting, then why is the fucking name attached to it other than for money? This was just a cheap, quick cash grab and just such a fucking stupid idea. Because I think it set back Halle Berry's career, blacklisted everyone else in this fucking movie from ever appearing in stuff. Half these people don't even have Wikipedia articles there in this fucking movie. Oh okay. yeah. Catwoman was garbage, it was a cash grab, it was a failure, and I fucking have no idea why it was ever made. Even out of curiosity, don't watch this movie, it's like a fucking boring It's not shit worth it. It's a waste of fucking time. I can't, I can't recommend this movie to anybody. I really can't. Because, even out of morbid curiosity, if you're like a fan of superheroes or the comics, you're not gonna get anything out of it, because it's not really a superhero movie. If you're a woman, you should be offended by this fucking movie. 
nobody's gonna get shit out of this. Honestly, I haven't seen Wonder Woman yet, but I'm just saying, if you have to fucking watch a female-led superhero movie, don't watch this. Don't watch Electra. You know, there's a lot of movies that'll probably be coming out soon that are going to be done better than this, because I cannot think of a superhero movie that's worse than this, to be honest. It's hard to believe, but... I didn't even finish this movie. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Oh, it's definitely... It's definitely I, I, bad. Dead serious. This is 